All right, time for facts or facts. We're going to move into the south now and talk a little bit about Jackson, Mississippi. We know that they've had a big water crisis on its hands. It started late last month during a historic rain event. The city saw nearly 10 inches of rain over three days that led to problems at the water plant. The city's mayor says it could cost a billion dollars to fix, but the question is who's going to foot that bill? To find the answer, you got to go back a little further into history. Here's the vote, asking for a friend. Who gonna write the check to help Mississippi? Oh, oh, we already did. We did. You did. All the American people. We already did. But um, our state governor, he sent it back. Mm -hmm, he did. E even though black state legislators in the state of Mississippi have gone repeatedly and asked for water infrastructure money for the city of Jackson, where the state capital sits, he still, he vetoed it. Mm -hmm, he sent the money back. Mm -hmm. And, and then when mayors that going back to the 1970s have tried to do like a one cent sales tax in order to pay for their own stuff, mm, he didn't let that go through either because you have to go to the state legislature to approve the sales tax. And he said no. So, yeah, um, the check's been written. We've we've written the check. He just keeps sending it back and, and won't let it clear the bank. So that lets you know folks in Mississippi need to vote. Mm -hmm. Well, that was Heather McTeer Tony, and she is the vice president of community engagement at the Environmental Defense Fund. She's also a former mayor of Greenville, Mississippi, and served as an EPA regional director under the Obama administration. And she joins us to dig deeper into this issue. OK, before we get into this bill that was vetoed and all of that, let's first talk about how Jackson's been under a boiled water advisory since July. So give us the history on how we got to this point because it seems it goes back even farther than July. This has been an issue for a while. It absolutely has. And, and thanks so much, Steph and Jordan, for even elevating this issue and continuing to keep it at the forefront of the conversation because it's the epitome of what happens with environmental injustice. Jackson, Mississippi, like so many other communities around the country, have been suffering for generations, actually, of the lack of infrastructure. So as a result of not only climate change and extensive and extreme weather and storms that put pressure on crumbling systems, it worsens the problem when we don't have support or we can see where there's been vetoed support from state uh, leaders. So, you know, it's, it's a terrible situation, but one that did not start yesterday, didn't start two weeks ago, it didn't start in July. This has been an ongoing problem. The good news is we can fix it and we should fix it so that communities around this country know as we get into a deeper climate crisis, we're able to ensure we have sustainable, resilient infrastructure. And can you kind of break down how it happens when you get a flood event like this? What happens to the water plant specifically? And then, you know, after you describe that kind of break down what we could do to actually prevent that from happening. Absolutely. You know, when you have a storm that comes in, let's think flood, tornado, hurricane, all of our infrastructure, water, sewer, pipes, they're underground. So when the ground becomes saturated and in Jackson's situation, when the water sewer plant actually becomes submerged, it puts extreme pressure on those pipes. Then the pipes can break or there is some way that pollution can get into the pipes. And that could be in the form of dirt, uh, a fracture. And that eventually makes its way into homes. So what you have is when you have stronger, longer floods, water pressure on these systems, it creates more of a break. And think of if you have a wound in your body and you're only putting little Band-Aids on it, the wound doesn't get better. So that's what's happened here. We have years of knowing that this exists, but only putting little bitty Band-Aids on it. And now the system is completely broken. But here's the good news. Again, we have a way that we can pull together state funds with federal funds and local action to ensure that not only this situation, but other communities around this country are able to do the same thing. So just yesterday, there was a historic moment of celebrating the Inflation Reduction Act. The White House passed uh, an act 
that allows us to see extensive resources put into not only climate infrastructure, but environmental justice across this country. What does that mean? That means that right now there are billions of dollars available for communities just like Jackson all across this country to not only restore, but also maintain and protect communities in the future. Now, this is just the beginning. It is just the floor, and there is a lot of work to be done. We know that it may be a billion dollars or more to make sure that Jackson's system is brought up to where it should be. But there's got to be input, and there's got to be support, and there have to be resources put in from the state as well as the federal government. No one can do this by themselves. Let's talk a little bit more about that because it seemed like the House of Representatives and the Senate were all for fixing this water plant and the money and then it was vetoed by the governor. So can you go into a little more detail about, you were saying the check's already written. The check was already written. What happened? So you have cases and scenarios in the past where you're right. State legislators have put forward a bill. They have asked for funding to ensure that Jackson's water system is sustainable and strong. But it got to the governor's desk and he vetoed it. If we even go back again, there was a push for the city of Jackson to have a one cent sales tax added where that's the community uh, resident saying, this is what we want to ensure that our water system, and that didn't make it out of committee. But there was even another, um, report uh, that was shared by former Mayor Harvey Johnson Jr. And this goes back almost 20 years, where he talks about how the city of Jackson, under his leadership, even tried a payment in lieu of taxes, a way to ensure that the funding system still is not only sustaining the water infrastructure, but that it's continued. And that didn't pass through. So we, we're looking at at least 20 to 30 years of state leadership, of the state legislators of Jackson, uh, Congressman Thompson, the, the congressional um, leader for that district, all working to try to figure out this problem, but they've there have been barriers. Mm -hmm. And it's evidenced in what has happened um, in the veto and then the lack of Jackson's water infrastructure pieces being able to get out of committee. So with that history, we can look and see where there have been some barriers. But again, I have to point to the fact that that does not stop, nor does it negate what the needs are today. Because what we do in this scenario is indicative of what we will do with climate infrastructure and environmental justice communities across the country. So we've got to keep this at the forefront. People have to continue to pay attention. And more importantly, we have to utilize this funding that has come through with the um, Inflation Reduction Act, as well as Justice 40. And other funds that are available. We got to keep our eyes on this one. Definitely. Heather, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Uh, I know this is not just important to you, but for the residents of Jackson and the entire country is watching. We, uh, we appreciate your time. That was Heather McTeer-Tony, Vice President and Community Engagement at the Environmental Defense Fund.